Welcome to Schoenberg's Perennials. Today, we're going to talk about microtonality and xenharmonic music, which is basically the same thing, but I like the word xenharmonic better simply because microtonal, it's kind of a dumb term. It just and xenharmonic means... isn't? Well, think about Arabic music or Indian classical music where they use tones that are technically microtonal. But in their sense, they're not microtonal because they're sus- microtonal. Mm-hmm. Just in a, if you say microtonal, it actually means microtonal to a Western ear because you think of microtones, you think of quarter tones, things in between twelve, the twelve equally divided pitches. Yeah. So Zen harmonic to me doesn't suggest that Western division where it's it's just Zen harmonic means anything that is in a different tuning than the listener is expecting. Oh, okay. So it's sort of like. Somebody who's learned, because like when you listen to Zen harmonic music or microtonal music, you have it. You have a sort of like a whoa, mind blowing moment where you're like, that sounds completely alien. I don't understand anything that's happening. And somebody from India would have the same experience for this music because they just invented their own tunings, um, but in a different way because they're used to different tunings. And maybe they would listen to Western music and think, whoa, this is totally alien. You know, that kind of thing. So who came up with the term Zen harmonic? Because to me, it sounds like kind of like West Coast hippie terminology, like <laughs> synergy. I think it was invented in that time period, like 60s, 70s, 80s. I don't actually know the complete tech. I know that it's, it has a, it's, it's from uh, Latin, like Zen meaning strange foreign sound, or, and then harmonics meaning harmonics. So it just means like strange harmonics. That's what Zen harmonic means. So it definitely has that very old school, let's just take the Latin word, stick it together, and then new word is created kind of thing. Okay. You know, you know old what I'm talking school. about? Well, that's what they did, in, like, if they needed a word for, like, the medicine always does that. They always go for the Latin word, or the, you know, have, everything has to be in Latin for some reason. I, I'm just, I'm still picturing some guy who doesn't wear <laughs> shoes anywhere saying, it's not inharmonic, man, it's zenharmonic. <laughs> I can see it. It is a bit of a of a cheese term. I, I like it. I like it. It makes me feel special. So, okay. um, so throughout this this uh, little bit, I'm going to be talking about the tuning that they're using. I'm going to be using a word called edo, which just means equally divided octave. Okay. So when I say twelve edo, it just means that's the normal tuning we have. Or twenty four edo is just twenty four tones per octave. Twenty four equally divided, equally divided octave. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. And that's what we're used to over here. Um, that's just what I use. People just do whatever. T- I mean, like, that's the tuning we're used to. Oh, 12 tet or 12 edo is what we're used to. Yeah. People also use tet. It's the same thing. as Well, it's slightly different, but it doesn't matter at this point. It's really annoying. They have, like, six different words for the same thing, and it's like, oh, there hasn't been a standardization <laughs> yet. It's just like, ah. <laughs> so it really depends who you talk to. Get it together, nerds. Yeah, basically. There is a reason that there's two of them, but people haven't really decided which one they want to use at what time so i'm going to use edo because i really like it it describes exactly what it is okay 12 you know and most most like a lot of the tunings that you'll hear are going to be equally divided there are some that are like um you take the octave and you divide it unevenly Mm -hmm. like a pythagorean tuning where it's like ridiculous the last has like a bunch of small ones and there's like two really big ones and then that sounds really weird that's almost like using the harmonic series it's, it's it's odd. Anyway. I mean, that seems like the kind of thing that, to me, will just sound out of tune. I'll just be like, what's going on here? That actually sounds more in tune, to be honest. Oh, okay. The Edo ones are actually worse because oh, no. they're not tuned um, with the harmonics, whereas, like, Pythagorean ones will be tuned with harmonics. So yeah. It's like more s- I mean, that's usually how I explain a lot of my harmonics to my violin students is with the Pythagorean thing because it's where you divide a string equally, right? Yeah. Into kind of sections. That's how you understand your harmonics on a violin. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Well, I think. I don't know how to play the violin, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I think that's pretty much all we need to know. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to the Zen Harmonic Podcast and all of the work and like the Zen Harmonic Wiki because oh, it's a beautiful place. You should go there if you oh. like Zen Harmonic music or all anything right. microtonal. Also, Sevish's microtonal workshop allows you to make tunings inside of your browser. Very exciting. Whoa, that's wild. Yeah. And then do you hook that up with your, all your crazy synth stuff that you do? Yeah, you can You you can say, I want to play in 17 Edo. And you type that in, and then you can download the uh, tuning file, and then you can just like 
uh, if you have a synth that allows you to import tuning files, you just press the tuning and it works. Hey, Crazy. Presto. Yeah. Cool. It's very exciting. People have said, I think, Zevin, uh, Savish and Steven Weigel were saying that today is, or now is like a renaissance of microtonal music. People are like doing it all and it's getting exciting. So I, 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 think, he's, I think he's correct. I think they're correct. Anyway, on to the first example. This one is very fun. I like this one a lot. Fast, fast head case, 24 Edo. I love this one because when my sister heard it for the first time, she felt physically ill because it's so lilting and like it's so I think I can't remember if I heard this somewhere, but he really likes does he really like this? I think. I don't know. It appears that he really likes um tonality and like consonants, but then uses microtonality to sort of bend it. So it's like really bendy. It's very bendy. Anyway. Ooh, okay, I'll brace myself. Yeah, I know. Get I feel excited. like this is gonna be like the musical equivalent of Space Mountain at Disneyland. Maybe. I don't know. Here we go. What do you think about it? I I totally know where your sister's coming from. I kind of <laughs> I do love it. It's really it's really fun, but it does really make you feel seasick at first. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. it's kind of like um the the sound of like an old cassette tape where it's going Yeah. There's an element to that for sure. Yeah. It's that bending because I think what he's doing is he's he's playing uh chords and then he's shifting them up up uh, a quarter tone or shifting down a quarter tone every time he changes a chord progression yeah in the chord progression so it's like slightly higher or slightly lower than you expect now i'm i'm assuming he can only do this electronically right like it's not like he has a guitar that has quarter tone frets on it lots of people do uh i this one is i think completely electronic i mean obviously he's singing and i think he's i i imagine he's tuning his singing i don't know for sure because you can microtonally tune like uh melodyne has a scale import feature and oh okay so he's not training himself to actually sing like i think he, i mean you have to a little bit in order to like decide which pitch you want to do you can't just like sing normally and then tune it like it kind of works but it's not that i i don't know what he's doing to be honest but um yeah it's it's tuned and it's electronic mostly this one but a lot of people like i think part of the reason that it, a lot of people only go electronic is that it's so hard to do acoustic stuff because you have to build your own instrument yeah yeah that would be wild like does this guy do shows do people go see this i think so um i think it's pretty new oh no this is 2019 i don't actually know it's um i think he's from ontario kingston ontario like Ooh. um but i don't know i thought he was british originally but apparently not <laughs> yeah it actually does kind of sound a little british yeah on his other videos he does sound have a british accent so i feel not like his he... voice like the style yeah uh, like that shoegazy washy mm, kind of mm-hmm. it's got a little bit i don't know I'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably not using the right words but it reminds me of some of the british pop i've heard yeah like radiohead ish or something like that yeah like uh what was the other band i'm thinking of anyway i love it it's my favorite thing it's so good um but uh that seasick feeling is just oh and um the reason i found this guy is because he did a uh synthwave remix of red dress which of course we talked about a ah, weeks ago. yeah so I'm going to play a little bit of that. of it i wonder what she thinks of all of these because there's a bunch of these things this is not the only one but um i i love this just because it sounds so normal it makes her voice sound like it's intentional <laughs> yeah which very is much really so. like wow i mean it, it reminds me of you know my favorite 
favorite um thing that ever happened on the internet ever, which is the lady who sings the American national anthem very, very like she changes she's out of tune like every single bar. And then the piano player plays along with her but changes key with her so that it sounds Live? like it's You've never I have not oh, shown you I this? Maybe I don't remember. Oh, this is my favorite <laughs> thing. It makes me laugh. I I've memorized that way. Whenever I sing the anthem, it's in her tuning now. Oh nice. Because it's so much, <laughs> it's so fun to sing along with her like that. I love it. Wow. What a what a golden opportunity. Yeah, we'll we'll look at it later. I'm excited. <laughs> Anyway, I love that one too. That one is in that one's not even in Tet. That's in Carlos Gamma, which is like um, do you know Wendy Carlos, the synth person who did like uh, switched on Bach in like the sixties. Yeah, the 60s. is she the one who did all the car horn stuff as well? I don't know about the car horn. She's famous because she took modular synthesizers and played classical music on it. Mm. So she sort of made it okay to use electronics and classical music, sort of like she made it popular anyway important figure in that section of the world anyway but this uh tuning is is i think based more on uh just intonation rather than edo's do i need to explain just intonation i think you do okay so just intonation is i mean you know a bit about it because you play the violin but just intonation is trying to get um perfect ratios between the notes if you're playing a chord or that's harmonic just intonation then you have scalar just intonation where you're playing between each note you have to have a certain distance that will be a ratio Mm -hmm. okay so there's many different types of it but i think when i say that it's based on just intonation it means that instead of just dividing the octave up semi-randomly they are uh, listening to just or not listening to but but trying to get to just intonation rather than trying to make this does that make any sense? I mean, when I think of the violin, it just reminds me of how, like, on the violin, I feel like minor seconds are closer together rather than on other instruments, for instance. There's certain intervals that I think I like a little crunchier when I'm playing on the violin, mm. um, which like, wouldn't be perfectly A440 kind of stuff. Yeah, you're, you're, you're tuning it with your ear as you go. Yeah. And you're often tuning to other instruments. Does that come into it as well? Yes, Where you're for like, sure. I'm going to tune to yes. the bagpipes that I'm playing with. Or Actually, there was, I forget what it was. There, one of these pieces um, that I'm going to show had a section where it sounded like bagpipe harmonics. Ooh. Well, you know how fucking sharp they are. Right? Yeah, I know. A478 or something like that? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think they must have been playing something that sounded similar. I don't know. Anyway. Cool. But that's just intonation. It's very exciting. Um, next, I wanted to talk about Jacob Collier. Of course. Because he's important only because I think it's it's important to note that just because you're microtonal doesn't mean it has to sound in your face. Like, I feel like he is in your face, but my main question with him is how did he get so big? Like, people love him, and I'm not saying he shouldn't be big because he is obviously, like, he's doing cool stuff, it seems like. I think? I like I like a lot of his music. A lot of it I avoid, but there are large chunks of it. I'm like, that's really cool. I think um, it's just cool that he seems to be bringing um, microtonality to, like, the masses. But what my question is, like, why are the masses accepting that? Because it's not overt. He is overt. He does like super complex things, but his microtonality doesn't sound like microtonality. Okay. Like, because it's all in context with itself. Super in context. It's sometimes it's in the background. All right. Next on the docket, Mercury Tree. That's the name of his band. Okay. Does it sound interesting? I like Mercury. I like trees. You like trees? Do you like Porcupine Tree? Uh, I didn't know that was a thing. Do you know who that band is? Do you know who that band is? I know who Parky Country are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. They they're famous. Anyway, uh Parky Country, uh Mercury Tree. Um they're interesting because most of their work is not electronic. They have fancy Edo guitars with 17 frets. Oh god, they're those stuff. guys. Oh, you hate this? Did I show I'm you? I'm just this? I'm just thinking this is like a step um horizontally from the, the guitarists who have to have, like, an eight-string guitar. Oh, I'm going like, to get one okay, of those buddy, pretty soon. buddy, 
Seven is enough. Hey, eight is good. I'm getting an eight string. Did you know this? I'm going to become one of those guys. It's so exciting. I'm, I thought about getting a nine, but I'm like, mm, no. That's too Wouldn't many. that be giant on your hand? Nine strings? Yeah, would you just stretch. It's fine. Jesus. You don't even... I like. I no offense, hands. but your hands aren't that big. No, they're not that big. I don't have Rachman on offense. No. So, anyway. 17... Okay, so this song and this entire album is in 17 Edo. So, 17 is Proctive. It's pretty exciting. Okay. I, just, I wish they'd made the same song, but with just 12 notes. <laughs> it wouldn't all. be the same song. What are you talking I know. But, okay, it sounds like it's got some really cool textures. It sounds like they're good musicians. They got nice tone. There's some cool rhythms going on already. And then there's those notes where you're just like, oh, I just feel like I'm at a child's <laughs> violin recital right now. Okay, so this is probably the most jarring of the music that we've heard so far. <laughs> They, I don't know if they do this deliberately, but they do, it does seem that they go out of their way to pick the most obvious sounding. Although this is the first one we've heard in 17 Edo. 17 Edo sounds like this though, as well. That's an interesting to note. Each of the tunings have like a different sound. So 17 sounds to me like they're just certain notes that just sound flat. And I think it bothers me because if anything is out of tune, I'd prefer it to be sharp for my weird bagpipe hmm. ears. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it. The thing about 17 is that there are no notes. So 24, the first one that we heard, mm -hmm. half of those notes you've heard before. Mm -hmm. It's just they'll either be slightly sharp or slightly flat. Whereas this one, all of the notes are not on the keyboard. Yeah. They're like nowhere near the keyboard. Any, none of the notes. I mean, there might be some that are close, but they're like, the only ones are the does and that's it. Mm -hmm. The ones. Everything else is just somewhere else because it's uneven. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's why it sounds... You know, like the face that you made. <laughs> Squinting eyes. With somebody who's been learning the violin for a very long time. It it's uh This is the reaction that I would assume a lot of people have to microtonal music. Is this sort of like it's wrong when it's just different. Mm hmm It's the kind of thing where like my dad isn't a musician, but I can guarantee that if he listened to this he'd be like, Ooh, it's out of tune. He can like he can tell that. He's got oh, a good enough can. ear. Yeah. That's the reason you have to be in tune. If no one could tell, you could just do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Like, if, if you were playing a song and someone, no one could tell you were out of tune, it wouldn't matter. What but a world. It does. And this is beautiful music. It's just, it's just a little, little bit more. So I wanted to mention, they like to use... I heard the, the guitarist or singer whoever writes the songs talk about how he likes to use modes when he composes. So apparently he got really bored of using them. He got he wrote enough songs in um, the original modes, so then mm -hmm. he had to move to 17 tone and write in all the 17 tone modes. I mean, there are a lot of modes though. It takes a right. long to go through a long time to go through all of them. I think he's written a lot of songs, but I thought that was an interesting anecdote that this is like modal microtonal music. I mm -hmm. think, and I think you can kind of tell, but. Because there's a consistent pattern. Yeah, there's like, he's using a certain number of the 17 notes. He's not just using all of them. Yeah. Which I guess most people would do, but... He's I mean, I guess we might want to explain what a mode is, which is uh, uh, just a pattern of notes that you repeat. Like, the mode we're all most familiar with is our normal uh, major scale. do 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 right? Yeah. Um, and then a mode is just uh, a different uh, combination of those notes with different things or sharp or flat. There's certain modes that we're all very familiar with. Like if you listen to music that's supposed to sound like it's from Ireland or whatever, you've heard like Mixolydian and Dorian modes. Anything you think sounds celtic -y, right? Um, and then there's some modes that we very rarely hear. And then there's some that like aren't in the like the seven kind of classically accepted modes, but there's like... Any combination of notes you want to put together as a repeating pattern can be a mode, basically. Yeah, a mode is just a... Uh, if you invent a scale, there will be modes of the scale mm -hmm. because it's just a subset of the scale. Yeah, I mean, I've been nerding out about this a lot because my mom's been writing a lot of music in a lot of modes. So she was writing... She was, I think she was, she was writing a series of uh, pieces that were... It was 88 uh, 
pieces for 88 keys on the piano for 88 constellations, and she wanted them to all have different modes. So she was nerding out about all sorts of different modes while she was doing that project. That sounds really cool. I think I saw the book, right? Yeah, guess? it's huge. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of <laughs> modes. Yeah. yeah, and there's still more. Like she, she occasionally messages me, and she's like, "Oh, check out this mode I just found. I'm writing a new piece of music," and I'm like, "Whoa, I've never even." And then I'll like try it out on my piano and be like, "Whoa, it's wild!" But yeah. Anyways, hmm. she's she's working within um the tonal system. Yes. Of course. Of course. What's, I mean, she's a piano player. Piano player. It'd be, it would be hard to to move. I mean. There are ways, but it would be a lot of work, and it is. It's super fun. I love it, but, you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Judging from your expression, I would assume she would have a similar reaction to this music. I think so. <laughs> um, me, okay, let's move on to the next composer, uh, the next peep band, because it sounds it's similar because they use guitars. Um, the one I'm going to play is from their first foray into microtonal music. Okay, I had no idea they did microtonal music, actually. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? Yeah. I haven't listened to enough of their stuff at all. But what do you I know from them? Hmm? What do you know of them? Like, which, which songs are Very bad? little. Just what you've played for me. Did I say it was microtonal? No. Um, I'll be curious to see if you've heard this song. Hmm. So, when I first heard this track, I was kind of like, oh, that's not real microtonal music. It doesn't sound microtonal. Um, well, actually... Well, it is microtonal, but I, I I don't know. I'm still in two minds. I like the track. It's really fun. Um, but I think because it was in their early stages of microtonal development or something, I don't know. It seems like they, they're they trying to sound more constant. Like the Mercury Tree people, they're not trying to sound constant. They're trying to like, I mean, it's really hard to sound consonant or sort of not dissonant to non-microtonal ears in 17. In 24, it's a lot easier to do that because mm-hmm. you just play. You just skip every other note and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, so anyway, here's a little bit of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. So you can see that like the melody can be played on a normal guitar and it won't sound super different. It reminds me a lot of desert rock. Well, yeah, they are desert rock. But like when you see like actual desert rock bands that come from Africa and they're playing on guitars that have like gourds as their bodies oh. and I've noticed that they often have that kind of half flat too. Da 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 like that little that little like <laughs> weird bendy note they've got right there. Okay. That reminds me a lot. Like there's a desert rock band that I love from North Africa. I think they're from Mauritania. Oh, okay. Called Nuramint Somali. Oh nice. And she's got some guitars that have that kind of sound. I don't know if it's the same at all. It's probably not. But that's what it reminds me of. It definitely does seem like they have a now that I'm looking at their guitar, it doesn't seem like it's 24 Edo, but it might be. They just might not play. Because uh, like Arabic music, it, they have a seven note scale, but then one or two of the pitches will be a quarter tone flat or sharp. Mm, so maybe it's that too. It kind of sounds like they're sort of doing that, but mm. I'm not sure. Anyway, but you'll see what I mean. It's it's quite tonal. Like it's quite palatable in comparison to the last thing that we heard. Yeah, there's just the one note in there where I was like, oh, tune that, tune that one note. <laughs> My, my dudes but that's it it's like <laughs> <laughs> no no it's the oh. Da, 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 oh yeah that's such that a good one, one. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. one i love that one <laughs> so good anyway i thought I'd mention, it's it's interesting that you like it doesn't have to be so overt like in, this is similar to like the jacob collier example where it's like it's in the background it's not in your face what's to you what is the value of having notes that just every once in a while a note will pop out and seem out of tune I don't think that's really what they're going for. I think that's just what we're hearing, but mm-hmm. I don't think that's because the entire thing is microtonal. It's not just that one pitch. So what do you think they're going for then? They're just experimenting. I think okay. they're trying to make it sound interesting and fun. I mean, uh, 
you know, there's a stoner element to a lot of their visuals. Yeah. I imagine it's it's sort of like trippy, you know, like it's whoa, it's kind of bent. They they a lot of the the sort of bridge to microtonal music is all bendy. Like it's very, it just seems like they're sort of bending notes to the next. Like it's sort of like a stretch rather than it being, you know. We'll we'll look at some stuff that's um, not square, but uh, it's not bending. It's like it stays there, and it's supposed to sound like that. Like it's just, it's I don't know how to explain it, but a lot of the stuff we've heard so far is very bendy. It's sort of like like that tape effect you you were talking about, mm-hmm. where it's sort of like it sort of seems like it's an effect rather than what they're actually playing. Almost like they're sort of playing an effect. I feel like the the bend is actually more. I feel like it's more like a perception in my mind where I'm I'm expecting them to bend up. To oh. be in the center of the pitch that I'm expecting. I don't think, I, like, I don't know if it's actually bendy what they're doing, or I'm just like waiting for them to correct it. Yeah. Like you would go, right? Mm. But they're not doing that. And I'm like, oh, where, where's the bend, bud? But it's just, it never comes. <laughs> okay. I think what I meant more is that it's sliding down. Like, there's very chromatic E rather than it being, um, like, it, in, in this one, they go like, rattlesnake da, da, ba. and then i think on the last one they do a semitone or a quarter tone na, na, na. like it's it's we heard the previous pitch and then they're going to reference it again but it's a slightly different pitch just mm. sort of compare the two but it's a semitone it's like a it's chromatic it's chromatic not like microtonally chromatic movement which is a slithery sort of snake vibe which you yeah know, rattlesnakes make sense to this cool but it seems like a lot of that's what people are doing is they're sort of like either Bending up, bending down, slipping in and out. Like it's it's a smooth sort of almost like a snake thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I meant. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, for sure. Okay. Um this was also the first piece of microtonal music that I heard. I think. Oh no, never mind. That's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so let's move on to the next one, because it was the first microtonal piece I heard. Um this is Sevish um Gleam. It's twenty two tone. It's twenty two in Edo. 22 Edo. Um, it's electronic completely. It's uh, I really like it. He has a whole album. I love the album, the Harmony Hacker that this is on. Um, I'll just play a little bit of it to see what you think about it. So happy, friendly, disorientating. I like it. It's really chill. Yes. Um, that is I find it really relaxing, actually. Oh, yeah? But, it, you know, the thing with microtonal and spectral stuff for me is just the first thing you play me is going to be jarring. And I, you're probably easing me into it as we mm-hmm. go, where I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I can handle more and more of this. Which is interesting, because that means that if you're open to it, you can change your, your mind's perception of what is... Uh, what, I mean, what music is supposed to sound like? For sure. I mean, Jacob Collier has perfect pitch, but he likes microtonal music a little bit. So, interesting. I, yeah, right. It's kind of like uh, that I should want, work. I'd love to pick <laughs> his brain about what that's like. Does he do it because he likes that uh, crunch in his brain, or is it is he able to do that because his perfect pitch is so specific that he can break it all up in tinier chunks? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if he does anything in um because he's done very minor things where he's sort of i mean the, although it went up an entire because he modulated in a microtone which would be a nightmare for perfect someone with perfect pitch because everything would be sharp you would think although i suppose the extension of perfect pitch is that you should have such an understanding of it if you're going to study music you should be able to understand it enough that you can break it down into those smaller uh chunks I want to see him do something in like seventeen to that. That would like, you know, 
that would be interesting or, that would or be interesting. see if he even likes music in 17 something like what do you feel about it you know yeah that would be completely outside of what he knows as the octave yeah he i'm sure he'd be an interesting person just to talk to like about <laughs> what music do you like uh, what do you listen to yeah Anyway, so this one uh, is very chill, as you said. It's relaxing. It doesn't sort of offend you in any way. I find the, even though, what I really like about it is that it's, the harmony is very zen. He's not just putting chords together and then sort of, the actual notes that he's choosing for his chords aren't perfectly in tune, which I think is cool. That's why, I'm, and I was, I was going to see how you felt about that. <laughs> Because the first example, the headcase one, I think his, I don't think his chords, they might be just, but I don't think they, they didn't sound out. It's just like the shifting is out. Maybe it's easier to listen to this when there are the chords then, because they create their own context. Whereas yeah. when you just get the one note that seems out of tune, so to yeah. speak, you're like, whoa, that, that guy sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. But if you create a whole landscape, maybe it's easier to walk into it. Okay. Let's see what happens when we talk about the uh, the the, la the some of the classical composers do that more because I think they're just more analogical, so they just figured it out more. But the next one um, is Zahana Rose, a Rose, which I think you have heard a piece of hers before. Um, I think it's amazing. This one is she's really into the beautifully tuned things and just just intonation. So this one is thirty one Edo, um, and heavy focus on vocals and naturalistic sounds in this one. Um, she has a really strong control of her voice, but I just want to see what you think of this. I could listen to that like forever. Okay, that's really interesting to me because okay, I I'm pretty sure you don't like the Beatles, right? I like everything related to the Beatles. I just don't like the Beatles. Okay. To me, <laughs> that what we just listened to sounds like John Lennon and George Harrison met up in the afterlife and did a bunch of peyote together. <laughs> Why does it sound like the Beatles? Um her vocal quality and um, the slidey way she's going about her voice, um, the instrumentation, the sort of uh, pattering kind of, uh, it, it, it's making me think about George Harrison and his um, zitar. Is that what he was playing? Oh, okay. A bunch. And then like the, the way that both those guys would sing together. Huh. And uh, it's kind of washy and kind of druggy. And I don't know what to make of it. I the one that you played for me before, I liked more than this. This one, I'm sort of like, what's what's happening? What's the point? I, is she trying to paint a picture of a sunrise? I don't know. I just love the harmony. It's so just over the top. It's just, and there's some really juicy uh, piano bits where you get that. Um, I can't just. It's like the seventh harmonic, I think. I love it. It's like a. Uh, Flat seven, but slightly flatter than it is. I think yes. Mm. It sounds so gorgeous. Um, I it could be. I just made that up. I wanted. I keep trying to find <laughs> it because I love that sonority. I want to see if I, I'm gonna just play it again. Okay. But yeah, this is probably my favorite song by her. I, which one? Do you remember which what one the one I sent you sounded like? Oh, you sent me Witchcraft. Oh, that one's really good too. 
Does it say it? It doesn't matter. I wonder if it was in just rather than 31, so less microtonal ness than this. This one has, oh, I think this one has a lot of microtones. I really like that. It's nice. Um, but yeah, she's really cool. She's, uh, I think I read that her, the big part of her work is uh, helping uh, trans women to feminize their voice. Yeah, you told me about that. That's yeah. really interesting to me. So apparently she was a musician and then she went through the the work of feminizing her voice and like i think that the knowing about how the voice worked like really helped to get that to go and i think it also i think she said it really helped with this as well just like knowing how harmonics function really mm, sort of so harmonics come into that that's i'm really fascinated by that whole process like i have a friend who is going through that right now mm. really successfully um and I don't understand it. It's one of the things as a vocal teacher that I would love to learn more about is like, how would you help someone? But like, that's a specialized thing. Yeah, really specialized. Yeah. And you, I mean, I, I imagine if I was going to learn that, I'd need to learn some medical stuff too, honestly. I, yeah, I think so. At least you'd need to know how, the, how it produces sound and how it produces different sounds. Because I mean, it makes sense though, because like the way that an instrument sounds is it's partials. So more of a fifth equals a guitar, you know, more of this equals different. So a voice is just a very particular subset of partials. I mean, you're not going to write them down and try to figure it out, but knowing sort of where they sit is probably helpful. Interesting. I think a lot of opera singers work with that too, depending on who your teacher is. I would imagine. Yeah, how you hear yourself um, and, and what sound you're aiming for. I mean, I think I've heard, when I was doing Barbershop, they talked about I think he made this. He made us go in a corner and sort of sing to ourselves and try to find where our voice sat. I think he called it. Mm -hmm. So like you just wait and then you sort of try to find a place where you were most relaxed, but you're the most loudest. Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. To do it with the most ergonomic technique mm -hmm. so that you have the least um, muscles firing at one time. Like I think the way that I think of it is like you find, hmm, it's hard to explain, but you sort of have to find where your voice is spinning, kind of the oh, sparkly bit. Okay. So one way to do that was like, if you sing on NG, like, ooh, I'm going to find where that feels like it's really spinning inside my head. And then okay. I'm going to add a, a bigger pitch to that. Like but that's really not... Um, Sciency. Sciency. It's it's that's really woo woo <laughs> woo woo voice teacher crap that I'm talking about. But well, it I mean, works. I don't think there's a different way to do it. Like, how would you? I think, but I think, because that's like the way to do it uh, practically. But then knowing how it works physically is probably like just allows you to do other things. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah, it's really cool. I really like it. Anyway, that's all I have for. This one. Do Great. you have questions? Yeah, but I can't think of any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do. How many people listen to this stuff? Like, how big is the microtonal community? Or, sorry, uh, what did you call it again? Yeah, community. Zen um, Harmonic Community. Zen Harmonic. I don't know. It always seems small, but then I always, like, end up finding new, like, bubbles. I think there's just bubbles a lot of places. I think it's a lot more prevalent than people realize. Is there Zen harmonic metal? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there totally is microtonal metal. It sounds fantastic. Woohoo! You want to hear some? Yes. All right, here we go. He does put uh, electronic elements in there, too. I mean, okay, it's a little harder to tell in metal because there's so much going on. Yeah, yeah. And it's so low. Yeah. It wasn't until the very end when he had some higher pitch stuff where I was like, oh, okay, I see. Here, let's try it again. Oh, 
Okay, I feel like this is where it's really shining the most for me. This is where the zen... This is the piece you like the best? Yes, this is where I think the... Oh, what is fucking... Zen harmonics? Zen harmonics seem to be the most appropriate. Interesting. Because, yeah. like, I feel like metal... Metal is like a raw... Well, it's not that raw because it's very well thought out, but it's very expressive... It's often going for the uncomfortable emotions, like the expressionism ec- episode that we did. Mm. And so it works, I think, to have some slightly off-putting things in there. Mm-hmm. There's so much texture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fun. And those, there's a couple guitar solos in there where I was like, oh, that's cool, because it's just that much more crunchy. I like it. It's super good. I, I love putting those in my music. I'm making a metal album EP right now, and I put like a bunch of microtron solos. It's pretty exciting. Yay. It's not going to be as good as this, because I don't have a... I don't have the frets. I have to like detune my E string a quarter flat and then just bounce between the two strings. Oh. So it's like kind of weird, but um, it gets the job done without having to buy a microtonal guitar. So um, I think this <sighs> is quarter tone. This is 24 either. I can see either. that in your future. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, pretty good for this one. What uh, you got? Any more questions? That seems succinct this is your favorite thing yeah the, you didn't even plan to have i know this in the i totally forgot this, this guy existed i was like damn it yeah this is cool um no i i I'm excited about the other stuff i might have more questions later on but yeah i think that's it for this week yeah that was awesome that was fun yeah well this has been shunberg's perennials yeah get in touch with us yeah. with us we are on instagram we yeah. have an email address we have a youtube we, we that's where you are right now oh, probably, probably. Yeah. We're unless we, this is the future um <laughs> you can also find both of us making music in various places online my name is holly beckmeyer i am nicholas marriott i have stuff on bandcamp and a tiny bit on title some weird avant-garde country title? music sponsorship. So much sponsorship it's about if i should die um not just because they were part of stuff because the tone the the quality of their music You've already is bad. We have this on another episode already. It's fine. I got to explain it every time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Happy Katoy Band is in the band, Avant Garde Country. It's pretty exciting. Check it out. Some trap music in there. Some uh, gent. S- some microtonal music. Our first thing has uh, 24, uh, 17 Edo at the beginning. Some sick arpeggios. Really? Which one? Truck. Nice. Truck. Yeah, it's a good song. <laughs> cool. All right. See you. Oh, we're going to have part two of microtonal classical music a lo- i think it's a lot more dissonant i really like it but it should oh, be good all right everybody so, get ready for that yourselves. next week